So I wanted to take a few minutes and talk about what you'll need to do your microscopy work and how to set a little bit on how to set up your microscope. So to begin with, you're going to need some slides and some cover slips, which are the small pieces of square glass that go on top. And you're going to need some lens paper because invariably your lenses are going to get dirty and you need to going to wipe them off and you have to have special paper for that. It's really thin and very, I don't know, soft as well as just regular tissues to kind of dip, sop up messes and when you get a little excess when you put your cover slip on. Also if you're going to do like compost or soil sampling you need a little measuring tube like this which you can get with cop syrup or whatever in uh, another video I show you how to use that but you basically put in one part of soil and then I think it was four more parts of water gently agitate it back and forth and then pull your sample off of that you're definitely going to need yourself an eyedropper and I've got a set of tweezers up here now in addition you may want to consider getting a couple dyes one is a this is a Congo red I just bought this off of Amazon. It's relatively inexpensive. And the and the other is, is this cotton phenol blue. I've got I bought a bunch of these little vials vials. You actually um, squeeze them and crack the glass open and then you apply it. That's for helping to highlight organic matter versus inorganic matter. So you know for example, if you're looking for mold spores or fungal hyphae and you do it properly, you actually, depending on whether you're doing a, a dry sample, which we're not going to be doing, or a wet sample, you have to use more, I find that you have to use much more dye for a wet sample, obviously, to get it to take into the organic matter, but it will turn organic matter blue or red, and that can help you uh, more readily identify material of interest. So in terms of setting up your microscope, this is a more expensive microscope than you need. I'll try and put a link down in the show notes of microscopes that Elaine Ingham has recommended as well as, oh, there is the kitten visiting again. Hello, good morning. As well as a link to a guy who um, has a nice video on, I believe he was doing, I don't know if he was doing a mold spore spore trap or a, a compost tea sample but anyway I'll put that link down there so in terms of your microscope I mean you have your eyepieces and you, you can adjust your eyepieces for your vision um, by rotating these dials here the eyepieces themselves come out and can be replaced I've got 20x eyepieces um, and also 10x eyepieces so the way it works is you take the uh, magnitude of the eyepiece so in this case 20x and then you multiply by the strength of the lens so right now I've got a 10x I believe that's a 10x lens running here you can rotate this 10x lens and you multiply those two and that gives your your magnification so it would be 20 times 10 or 200x and that's I find that that's a good magnification for just being able to quickly scan the slide and still have just enough um, resolution to be able to see, get a, get a sense for or see smaller protozoa like flagellates. Um, yeah, so then in terms of the micro, set, setting up the microscope, you, you pick your eyepieces, you, you set your lens to the most coarse or in this case a 10x lens then you've got your coarse adjustment here which is the large dial and, and it moves the whole head or lens assembly up and down and then you got your fine once you get in close you use your fine adjustment with this dial now one of the trickier adjustments is actually what's called a condenser lens so if you look underneath the microscope here there's a condenser lens here and so you have your light source down below here and there's an adjustment on the side and I can turn that and raise and lower that light source 
But then you have your condenser lens, which my understanding, and I'm not an expert by any means, is it focuses the light. And so, as well as acting as an aperture. So if I go like this with this lever, it actually is dilating and constricting what I'll call like an iris inside the condenser lens, but the condenser lens also focuses it. So you can do a light adjustment with this as well as it focusing uh, the light source properly on the slide. So I'm gonna put this back in here. It's just a little screw that you tighten, hand tighten. And the way that you adjust your condenser lens, because you can adjust, the, in my case, you can adjust the condenser lens with this dial here. And so it moves it up and down until it's focused properly. Well, when's it focused properly? properly? The way that I read on how to do it is just take a piece of paper like this, turn up your light source really strong down below, put it about halfway across, and then if you look at the laptop, you adjust the height of the condenser so that you get a nice crisp line. So right there, that now I know my condenser lens is adjusted at the right height. Now here's a caveat with this particular microscope is that you notice it's got a third I don't know what you call it, ocular tube to look down for the computer. So this is the pickup for the computer. And you can actually adjust the height of that by rotating this ring right here. So what you're supposed to be able to do is, I'm gonna turn my light down, I'm looking through here, is I'm supposed to be able to get the object in view And then I should be able to look at my laptop and it should also be in sharp contrast, but it's not. And so what you would do is, is you would actually rotate this barrel here, this knurled barrel to raise and lower the height. But you see, I'm as it's going up, it's getting worse. So I'm dropping it down. It's getting closer and closer and closer and it doesn't quite go down far enough. So it's a flaw in the way this thing is built, I don't know, maybe I didn't screw this barrel on. I, I think the barrel came on there attached. Anyway, I haven't ever messed around with it. I Once I get it started, I'm just always looking at the computer. But the other thing is, is the camera itself can rotate. And as you see, as I do that, it changes the orientation of the object. That's actually a calibration slide in there. Let me go ahead and adjust for the laptop. So you can see that's a calibration slide in there. And you want to adjust your camera so that it's oriented in the same way as when you're looking through your eyepieces and also as you're moving your stage with these two adjustments here on this particular microscope, two, two knobs right here. As you're moving your stage, when you move it to the right through your eyepieces, it's also moving to the right on the laptop. And that's just a question of turning the camera 180 degrees one way or the other. So, all right, so that's basic materials and setup of the microscope. But in terms of using the microscope, what you're going to find is when you look through there, you're going to see all kinds, this was my experience anyway, you're going to see all kinds of stuff where, you know, you're wondering, it, is that a flagellate or could that be a dead ciliate or is that a molt spore? And one of the really key factors is, is how big is it? Because all these organisms have a size range and some are way smaller than the other ones. So if you can look at your laptop and say, okay, I know that, uh, for example, one inch is equivalent to 46 microns at a, with a, um, 10x eyepiece in there, then you can actually get out a ruler and measure it and go, okay, it's, you know, 10 microns. So therefore, there's no way that's a nematode because that's way too small for a nematode. So the way you do that is get, buy your, you buy yourself one of these calibration slides. And I don't remember what this one is in particular, but, you know, the distance between any one of those markings 
is a very precise distance and you can measure that with your ruler and then knowing what that distance is and, and using your ruler you can say okay like I did with you know here I know if I'm running a 200x magnification 46 micrometers uh, is that micrometers I guess it is equals one inch and at 800x you know 11.6 micrometers equals one inch so I can just get out a ruler and measure whatever that entity is and you have a sense of the size now in conjunction with that you got to make yourself a cheat sheet so um here's my cheat sheet and i don't know if that this is one cheat sheet that i have and it's just showing the different microorganisms but you know what's even better than this is actually there's a guy called tim wilson and he's got some really excellent uh, videos that you can watch. I mean his microscope work is just excellent. He's got a good microscope and he really knows how to use it and he's got some really great videos showing all the different protozoa so I would highly recommend that but um, you know here's one that I did when I was studying mold and mold spores and you know on here I've got the different sizes of these different mold spores so that you know, like I said, when you're seeing that on the um, laptop, if you're not sure what it is, then you can actually measure it out. And I found that to be very helpful initially because you have no sense of what small is and what really small is. And is that a bacteria or is that just a huge chunk of dirt because you don't know that, you know, it's actually massive in size and there's no way that, that that's... A bacteria for example or is that a fungal hyphae fungal hyphae are relatively usually relatively small in uh, diameter so being able to measure it out I found to be really helpful initially so yeah that's I guess all I wanted to say on microscope setup and uh, I think I'll quit there